Hello. Before we continue, please read and sign this legal contract that you waive all rights to complain about how useless and boring this data really is. Although number six will shock you. <coughs> That's enough of a legal preamble, I suppose. Let's get started. Number one. First up is a collection of useless cricket data. Just not that sort. Let's start with the one that everyone knows. You can do sick flips and stomp on the crickets. But did you know the dungeon crickets and the Senpu Temple ones are programmed differently? The dungeon ones are pretty angry. While the temple crickets are pretty damn chill. Like, really chill. Like, lo-fi beats to study to chill. The reason why is this sick dude here. Off topic, props to whoever put so much effort into this guy's design. So yeah, pretty good. But there is actually a neat trick to him too. Let me show him your favorite waifu real quick. Hey look, more bugs. But when you get covered in this sick, they get real mad and screech about your taste of waifu. Like this. And finally, if no crickets are present, you can spawn up to four of them. While on the subject of animal abuse, let's move on to number two. Let's talk about the newest members of the DK crew. Normally, you'll just defeat the Brown Kong and then the Guardian Ape. But if you spare the Waifu Kong and kill the Guardian Ape first, this will happen. Also, at any point when he is headless and guard broken, with the spear you can attack his weak point for massive damage. Also, above the arena is a large monkey corpse, and the lore really is interesting. But I can't talk about it, otherwise Varty will come break my legs. And a small lone monkey you can puppet. Although it does nothing and it just times out and, you know, kinda dies. Uh, Miss Arky, please. <coughs> Number three, the message in the well. Well, well, well. Actually, hold up. I don't even see how this is a well at all. So I give Sekiro two out of 10, worst well in the series, not enough water. Plot holes aside, what happens if you ignore this message telling you to go to the Moonview Tower and collect it later in the game instead, if it even is there? Well, I didn't mean to do that. We'll come back to this one after this dude has made it to mid-game. Good luck, Skellington. Number 4. Gongman Data. Also known as the Beggar or Watchman, this one is more of a confession. So, we already know he has the weakest attack in the game. But if you ever die to him, then you must be... A filthy... Liar! He cannot kill. He cannot bring your HP to zero no matter what. But how about his older bro, Ministry Beggar? He spawns in the final events in the game, and he's pretty easy to miss since he is the last of his kind. Please donate. Also, quick theory. I think he's the same dude in stolen armor. It's not like the invading force brought him along with them. My evidence being, they are both using the same red-handled gong. In any case, he too cannot kill you by any means, but his new setup does let him do 3 damage rather than 1. As for any HP change, it's actually, uh, whoops, uh, forget about that charity bit. Oh god, number 5, door data. This one is so pointless, I had initially cut it out. But hey, why not? You cannot enter the moon tower through the front. The cheeky git won't open it for you. Let me in. Let me in. And if you try to leave after immediately grabbing the sword, like I did, the game won't let you. Get the shit stuck! Out my way, son! Door stuck! Door stuck! If you like your data mildly practical, you're gonna kick out of this one. Kill me, please. So in Fountainhead, there's a pretty annoying mini-boss that forces you to take a very long way around to deal with him. As you're gonna see, they've really made sure you couldn't just ignore this guy. 
Zooming out the camera, you can see when it hits the water, the radius is pretty huge. Even worse is that it travels down really, really deep too. You could just swim over and climb out on the other side. I mean, there's no invisible walls stopping you directly. And using items, you could tank four hits instead of two, but even with revives, you won't make it. But you can sneak past this whole area by following this route here. Credit to Dag. Link in the description. So with that tip, I suppose this area won't be as annoying as balls. <laughs> Number three again. Message in the well update. Minute game edition. Oh my god. <clears throat> in any case, we have the friendly dude outside. There's a purple ninja inside, or rather this JPEG ninja since he would get in our way. And the item is still here! But it is the same letter. Hmm. Let's reload the game and try once more just before the final boss to be concluded. Number six, the mystery of the three gunmen. Long ago, Back at the start of the game, there's a lot of guards and they all kill you in one hit. There are three gunmen in various places. No big deal, right? But did you know these are not normal gunmen? These are gun gods. I have hacked in full HP. The mobs in this area are weak as expected, except the gunmen. For whatever reason, they can absolutely wreck your shit and one-shot you. Pun not intended. After hacking in some more HP, I have no idea why they are as strong as New Game 7 gunmen. The worst part is, after getting your sword, they shoot off. <laughs> but seriously, they are nowhere to be seen. Crab emoji reward to whomever returns my boys to me. So at the minute, there are some really crazy Sekiro skips. So much so that you can beat the game in 22 Two. minutes. But there is a limit to what you can skip. You have to activate certain flags and events. Or things like this will happen. This is what the placeholder model looks like. So you only see it when the game is confused on what to do. And uh, things will probably soft flock like this as well. Moving on. It's spooky time. Unfortunately. So, have you ever wondered what is at the bottom of the abyss? Me neither. Normally when you drop down, it will just spawn you back at the top. Since it is pretty damn dark, let's use a depth trader and some god mode hacks not to respawn us. So let's see what happens. Hey, you. God damn it, totally away. did it again. Just kidding. What actually happens is a lot more disappointing. <laughs> you get it? You get my shitty joke? It's all connected, the deepest law. Kill me, dumpster. I'm gonna make this one real quick since we have kinda covered it already. Welcome to the stomping guide. Stomping does damage. It does damage to pretty much everything. And I can confirm, increasing your attack power also improves your stomps. And the temporary boss like the red candy works as intended. Now I can stomp this dude in 6 hits instead of the 7 earlier. Ropes can never do damage, even when hacks are used to amp your damage by a thousand times. So with all this stopping data, let me lazily transition to the final point. Number 10. Killing all the guards. With no sword. It is theoretically possible to kill all the guards in the starting era before you get your sword. So with enough skill, you can get revenge on those elusive gunmen. These gunmen do have increased health though. In fact, it's possible to stomp every single one of them to death. And they do stay dead after meeting Lord Koro. True, the miniboss can't be killed like this since you need a sword to death blow. And you cannot knock him off a ledge as much as I've tried. However, if you're just lucky enough for him to follow you this way, and then not accidentally kill you, you can have him walk off the ledge and eventually die. However, reloading the game, or dying, will respawn him. But I sincerely doubt anyone could kill all the guards without a sword. Any one hit kills you, 
and get the guy to kill himself is like a 130 chance alone. But if any of you depraved souls ever manage to do this, uh, I'll give you this limited edition crown emoji. Ooh. It's finally time. Heads up for minor spoilers for Endgame, obviously. I had to hack over the wall since there's no way in after the Ministry invasion. And this is interesting, there is a grate blocking up the well. Now, luckily the hole is here, so you can drop down, and the item is still there. Time for the moment of truth. Miyazaki, no! These are endgame spoilers! Just kidding. The letter is the same, sadly. I haven't even seen endgame, I only watched the black and white classics, like Kung Fu Panda. So yeah, that's the end of this very long, disappointing, useless video. So thanks for watching. I'd like to thank all my patron tiers, but I can't since I don't have one. But I might make one soon, that way I can waste your time and money. And finally, if you like this video, then uh, I love you too. Smooch.